I do. Back when you were a kid or going to the local fair. The reason I wanted to talk about the Gravitron is because I actually find it to be a really I find it to be a really helpful illustration as to why the whole official explanation of the Earth's gravitational pull versus the centrifugal force exerted by its alleged spin is um, something that just really falls apart very quickly upon examination of it and and I'm a pretty visual person so I like things that can kind of help me visualize concepts being talked about and um, the reason the gravitron is such a good one is because is because on the one hand it it really does work as a, as a pretty decent analogy for the explanation that we're given in terms of how the Earth's gravitational pull is pulling us downward towards the suppose uh, center point of the spherical globe or oblate spherical globe whatever whichever one you want and then while the centrifugal force of the spin is of course centrifugal force throws you outward as you see as you, when you ride on a gravitron, gravitron ride it's these two forces working together like on the gravitron as it spins the, the centrifugal force pushes you out against the uh, the walls and so the walls could could more or less be said to represent that force of of gravity pulling you inwards and so the two working together effectively balance each other out and hold you in place at the outer edge there so i mean this is essentially the the explanation that we're given as to, as to how it all works on the spinning globe model and so you have this perfect balance of these these two um, simultaneous forces supposedly but of course the main difference between the gravitron and the globe is that the gravitron is of course working on a on a plane it's, it's essentially a, a disc uh, spinning in a circle and not it's, it's not a ball so which really begs the question as to how that actually works on a globe if um, everyone knows that supposedly the, the speed of the spin at the equator is over over a thousand miles an hour 1080 or whatever the exact number supposedly is and um, and even in the mainstream explanation they they will say that because the the circumference that you're you're making at the equator is greater than you would be closer to the poles that gravity is slightly more the, the further north or further south you go however when you stop and think about this it just really doesn't make any sense of course because if, if the world is really a ball and really spinning on an axis you you could theoretically get pretty darn close to to where that actual axis point would be on either the the north pole or the alleged south pole and when it, if you were if you were to do that if you were to to be standing within a few feet of that that axis point the amount of uh, spin that you would actually be experiencing would be so slow even if you were to get within four miles of either one of the alleged poles, four, mi four miles of that axis point, uh, four miles giving you a diameter of eight miles, which means that you'd have a, a circumference of rotation of about roughly 24 miles. 24 miles over a 24-hour period would be one mile an hour. So anywhere within four miles of that axis point you're you're going one mile an hour or slower so if you compare over a thousand miles an hour to one mile an hour or less uh, the sig the difference is just so significant that it, it doesn't make any sense as to how you, the the supposed the gravitational pull which is supposedly being caused by the molten core pulling everything you know that's spinning in the, the center of the earth pulling everything towards the center you no longer have that centrifugal force counteracting that so essentially gravity would should be of a, of a ratio of a thousand to one difference when, when you got to the poles and you'd be, be, be incredibly heavy it'd be noticeably different you'd, you would barely be able to move and so when you think about the fact that I mean airplanes obviously fly over the the Arctic region and can fly over the the North Pole they say they can't fly over the South Pole because it's too cold which that that's a whole nother story but that doesn't make any sense but the idea that <laughs> that the centrifugal force being 
so vastly different at the equator versus the poles, but that somehow doesn't have any bearing on on the gravitational pull. I mean, you tell me, does that does, it just flies on the face of common sense? And not only does this apply to things like airplane flights or you know people physically trekking across the North Pole, but you have things like satellites, which are supposedly. I mean, you have the geo, what they say are the the geostationary satellites which are all basically above the equator and they their explanation is exactly like the gravitron where they're in that sweet spot between the, the gravity and the centrifugal force and that they just like basically hang there being pinged to that edge of the gravity like the, the gravitational wall and that's the geostationary satellites but with the other satellites that are orbiting they're not staying in a uh, in a fixed motion right at the equator they're going above it and below it and so the, the centrifugal force being exerted upon them would be even greater uh, differences because you know with the increase of altitude uh, that extends the the circumference of, of of every point all right so you're talking about vastly greater speeds and so how does it how does a, a satellite which is supposedly orbiting the earth go from being thousands of miles an hour of rotation to too far less than that and yet they are able to hold their altitude perfectly for for years on end i mean it just it all flies in the in the face of centrifugal force so hopefully that makes sense because i mean if we can understand the properties involved in a simple carnival ride which we expect even a an elementary school child to be able to to comprehend and yet when it comes to the globe, it all gets thrown out the window and we come up with all this extra theoretical mathematics to explain away what we've just, what we understand. You see how it's just, it's all a bunch of nonsense. The Earth is not moving. We're not on a spinning globe. Grab